Knowing many chord shapes in different positions is always a great advantage in playing the guitar. Not only you can understand better when playing solo, but you will have wide sound palette in disposal when accompanying a singer, either by yourself or in a group setting. As part of the guitar soloing series, in this lesson you will learn the basic chord shapes that I normally use as a reference when soloing on any chord changes. There are five chord shapes. Every serious guitar player should know these chord shapes by heart and able to locate and play them on the entire fingerboard. By getting familiar with these chord shapes in the whole fretboard, you will easily apply the concept in my other lesson titled Guitar Soloing in Any Chord Changes. Check the promo link below for more information about that lesson. My name is Ronaldo and I have been playing and teaching guitar for many years now. I am very passionate about learning and teaching teaching musical instruments, sharing my experiences to all my students. Let's start with the guitar chord shapes now. Let's begin with the proper orientation of the guitar to our chord diagram. There are many conventions that I've seen regarding chord chart reading. Some of them are oriented vertically or as mirror fretboard. As long as you understand the position, it doesn't matter how one presented the chord diagram. However, I think presenting the chord this way is easier to understand. So let's be consistent. I enlarged this diagram as I know most of the viewers now watch the videos with their smartphones and not on a computer. Let's start with this chord shape number one. By the way, all of these chord shapes that I am showing you are all movable, meaning you can have the same shape and move it around the whole fretboard. This is A major. You will notice that I indicated third. That means it is the third of A major, which is the note C sharp. Don't be mistaken it as the third finger. You will see that there's an arrow and slanted line that divides the fingerboard. The arrow means it's movable. The movable D major, the third is F sharp note. I purposely did not include the actual fingering number as I have students who are left-handed and I started teaching them guitars using the same diagrams. Although they look weird as they play upside down guitar, I thought it was cool even it looks unusual. With the same position, let's derive the minor chords. By lowering the third a half step, we can now have A minor. For these chord shapes, the two notes outside the fingerboard are open strings, which are A and E respectively and it's also movable. So now we have the D minor. Third is an F natural. Let's move on to chord shape number two. This is an F major chord. The third of F major is the note A. This is also movable. This is A major. The third of A major is the note C sharp. With the same positions, we can derive the minor chords by lowering the third a half step. We now have F minor for the first chord and A minor for the second chord. The third of F minor is A flat and the third of A minor is C. This is our chord shape number three. This is a D major chord. The third of D major is the note F sharp. Again, this is a movable chord. Now we have the G, the third is the note B. Using similar position, we can derive the minor chord by lowering the third a half step. Now the first chord is a D minor. The third of D minor is F. The second chord is a G minor. Again, this is movable. The third of G minor is B flat. Let's move on to chord shape number four. This is a C major. You will notice that there are two third notes with these shapes an octave apart from each other. The third of C is the note E, and the third of F is the note A, and it's a movable chord. Some of you may not have used this F shape before. In the minor version of this position, you will see that I did not include the third note, which is the octave above, as it is difficult or impossible to finger these shapes. This is C minor shape as a movable chord. This is an F minor. Even if we don't include the other third note, it is very important to know where it is in the fingerboard so you can include it when you are soloing. 
This is chord shape number five. It's kind of similar to our chord shape number one. For this shape, I did not indicate the other third note since it is indicated on our chord shape number one. Also, I would like for you to get familiar about the third of these chords, how it is positioned. This is G major. The third of G major is B and it is a movable chord. So this is a C major, the third of C major is E. With the minor version of this chord, you will probably have not used this shape before. This is a good shape when soloing, visualizing this shape, for it is in its first position. This is G minor, and of course it's a movable chord. This is C minor, and the third of C minor is the note E flat. Get familiar with this shape as it is very useful when soloing. Now let's add the 7th chord. This is A major 7 and this is D major 7. This shape is derived from chord shape number 1. So I'm gonna call this chord shape number 1 A. This is F major 7 and A major 7. This chord shape is derived from chord shape number 2. Let's call this chord shape number 2 A. This is D major 7 and G major 7. This chord shape is derived from chord shape number 3. Let's call this chord shape number 3A. This is A minor 7 and D minor 7. This chord shape is derived from chord shape number 1 again, but let's call this chord shape number 1B. This is F minor 7 and A minor 7. This shape is derived from chord shape number 2, so let's call this chord shape number 2B. This is D minor 7 and G minor 7, which is derived from chord shape number 3. Let's call this chord shape number 3 B. Let's move on to dominant 7th chord. We can build a dominant 7th chord by lowering the root by two half steps. This is A7 and D7 shapes. This is also derived from chord shape number 1. So let's call this as chord shape number 1 C. This is F7 and A7. This is also derived from chord shape number 2. Let's call this chord shape number 2C. This is D7 and G7 shape. This is derived from chord shape number 3. Let's call this chord shape number 3C. This is C7 and F7 shape. This chord shape is derived from chord shape number 4. So let's call this chord shape number 4C. For your own homework, you can derive the dominant 7 chord for chord shape number 5. So there you have it. Once you get familiar with these 5 chord shapes, you are ready to learn the upper extensions for each chord shape. The 9th, 11th, 13th, or altered chords. Some people call this five chord shapes the caged chord system. It is good to have a short turn but you can remember to understand that once you know these shapes it is easier to get further with your chord knowledge for the guitar. So good luck and have fun!